Hi, how you doing? President Hugo Chavez of Venezuela was buried last week, but hopefully not his beloved Bolivarian principles. This term Bolivarian comes from Simón Bolivar. He led Gran Colombia as president from 1819 to 1830 and is cherished as a liberator and visionary. Hugo Chavez was certainly of the same mold. When first elected, Venezuela was a mess with income inequalities and poverty that made for constant strife and upheaval. Surprise, the U.S. empire used him as a straw man and scapegoat at every turn. The CIA even led an unsuccessful coup attempt to remove him in 2003. No wonder corporate media did their whole Chavez bad scary thingy as they are wont to do. Actually, it may be more useful to wonder why so many progressive South American leaders have died from or are ill from various forms of cancer. It's like all of them get these weird cancers. Look it up. It's a curiosity acting president Nicolas Maduro claims is directly linked to the U.S. While Native Americans have resisted U.S. and Canadian efforts at colonialism over the last 400 years, something new is emerging. Anyone worth their environmental salt knows the Keystone or XL Pipeline is a bad dream by energy companies to bring really nasty tar sands goo to the southern United States for processing. And it's just that, a bad dream. Well, I Don't Know More is a new movement initiated by Alberta Indians because of the decimation the tar sands extraction process causes and, surprise again, this minority culture is unduly impacted by the extraction process. But now protests are taking place, and media like Rolling Stone and the Huffington Post and others are picking up on the story. Last week in Hawaii, the state house passed a modified GMO labeling bill's third and final reading and gave it over to the state senate, with only one house member voting no. On Friday, the Vermont House Agriculture Committee, after weeks of testimony, passed H-112, or the GMO labeling bill, by an 8-3 vote. H-112 requires producers to put labels on raw agricultural and processed packaged food products that are genetically engineered. The bill will go to the House Judiciary Committee for review, then onto the floor for a vote. Meanwhile, according to the Huffington Post, while Americans are largely uncertain of whether genetically modified foods are safe for the environment or safe to eat, but over 80% say that foods containing genetically modified ingredients should be labeled. Lancaster, California, a town in the high desert outside of L.A., is the first to require solar panels on new houses. Starting on January 1, 2014, all newly constructed single-family homes must include a 1-kilowatt solar system at bare minimum. This city of over 150,000 already leads the state of California in solar generating capacity. Awesome. In an update to Cincinnati's parking privatization scheme, a judge placed a restraining order on the bill as public outcry is forcing council to consider a citywide vote on the measure. Sunday in Oakley was the kickoff of the registration drive, as 7,500 signatures are needed to get the measure on the November ballot. Organizers want much more than 7,500 to make a statement to our dumbass city council. One interesting provision is that the board who would control this system is mandated to do what's best for the parking corporation, in our case Xerox, instead of what's best for the city. It also forbids public transit efforts that might in any way undermine parking's value. Is this bullshit or what? In a few years, the 92 million windfall is gone, we still have financial challenges, and again, the citizenry has been screwed. Come on, man, this is no way to run a city. Let's wake it up. Thanks for watching. Tune in again next week when we'll uh, play some more. Peace out.